everything is aligned. So when you when you see things falling apart, I actually like get excited now. I'm like, ooh, change is happening. The the sh they're shifting. Like the shift is happening. Things will always be shifting. The only constant is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Everything else is fleeting. And the second you start feeling stable or comfortable is when he like shifts all over again. And that's to teach us like, and subhanAllah, like you see Allah a certain type of way when you get introduced to him. And then it's like the whole journey is just picking at that layer and going deeper and deeper and deeper into it. And subhanAllah, like you can only know Allah when you know yourself. Like we are that direct reflection of who our creator is. So people think we have to like go after our destiny or we have to fight for the things that, excuse me, that are meant for us. Like sit, chill, relax, do your ibadah. That's all you have to do. The five. I'm average, but I don't like the, the Hallmark standard things, right? That's my love language. I don't need the full PDA. I don't need any of that. Put your hand on my on my leg and I'm good. Like that's my way of understanding and receiving what I need, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what his love language is. What his like the way to get to Allah is through Allah, through the things that he loves. And he tells us it's in our five daily prayers, our obligation, right? So don't be worrying about working overtime, skipping duhr and asr so you can work for your boss, but you're thinking about the one who gives your vision, okay? And we're not saying it in like a transactional way, like I'm going to do this so Allah can do this. Like, no, but Allah will consistently reward you and make things easier. In the mind, Usri Yusra, as you walk or crawl to him, he is running to you. He's more merciful than your own mother. Like, we need to be reminded of these things because you can't love what you don't know. You can't trust what you don't know. And I think a lot of people, like, it's just fear. It's fear with Allah. They pray out of fear. They talk to him out of fear. They do their azkar out of fear. And I'm not saying that's not going to get you Jannah. Cool. But we don't want Jannah. That's another creation. Jannah is just another, it's a perfected version of the dunya. That's it. It's mm -hmm. still a creation. Like, I'm trying to go <laughs> all the way. Like, I want him. So if I want him, think about what you do when you're in a relationship. Like, what do you do for your partner? You want to go above and beyond just to see the smile. I, I don't even want to hear a thank you. I don't, just that look. So imagine with Allah, your provider, your sustainer, and it's not so he can give you, it's so he can love you. Like he loves you regardless because you're his creation. But I want that VIP love. Like I want to be his beloved. I don't just want him to be my beloved. I don't want to just love him. I want him to love me. You know what? I don't want this one-sided relationship. That's everything here in this dunya, you know? So you have to cultivate this relationship and you have to like, subhanAllah, like show your sincerity. Like Allah, I want you just because of you, not because of my mom, my dad, the money situation, the marriage, the children, the divorce. Like, I just want you because of you, <laughs> like, because you're worthy of being wanted. I'm praying to you for the simple fact that you should be prayed to. <laughs> then we can talk about what it is that I want. Come to Allah in like, you know, confirming who he is. When you get on that prayer mat, everything in the unseen realm shifts out of the way when you put your head down to sujood. That's why there is nothing between you and Allah when you go down and you make sujood. That's why you are the closest. When your heart is above your mind, you go down and you, you put your head on the floor, what raises your chest area? It's like every single thing has hikmah. It's constant reminder of his love and it's not out of like subhanallah like subhanallah we think okay i prayed my five daily prayers so if i go do this tonight if i get a little lit it's okay like it's balanced we're keeping it even at some point something's got to give you know what i mean like which wolf are you feeding like which part of you are you trying to cultivate the angelic part of you the prophetic part of you 
or are you cultivating that animalistic side of you? Because we all have it. I know what I'm capable of as Samat. I know who I am as a human, separate from what Islam tells me is right or wrong. You know what I mean? And that's why you have to know who you are. Because if you know, and it's not in a way to shame you or guilt you. Allah made you with certain temper. He made you with certain personalities. So when you know who you are, it's like taking that weapon from the shaitan and you're using it to protect you because now the shaitan can't use it against you. If you know you struggle with fajr, girl, put six alarms on if you need to. Sleep extra early. Don't have that second coffee past 5 p.m. How much accountability are we really taking? Like anybody that's grown up with me will tell you I'm tough love. And after the two car accidents and the brain injury, like I have no filter. Where is our accountability? You got your alarm for five. I was talking to my um, little brother and he had to wake up at like 3.30 one day to get shoes from Japan or something. And I'm like, I want to see the same energy when you wake up in an hour and a half profession. Okay, I want to see that same energy when you are putting in the sunnas before Fajr. You know what I mean? It's like we're what is we're focusing on the wrong goal. And after Allah took away like my health physically, I couldn't do the things I used to do anymore. Okay, so I had to be like, Allah, this is so like mean. Like you take my health. I can't worship you the same way. And now I feel horrible. Like I'm not doing enough when I didn't even choose this. But then Allah tells you, like, those who are sick, they get a complete prayer because Allah knows that you're sick. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm good. If I can have a complete prayer until the day I die because of this illness, alhamdulillah. Because if it was up to me and I prayed the most perfect prayer I possibly could intend to, it still wouldn't be perfect. So work smart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't work hard. When you wake up, align yourself. The Sahaba used to be like, Every morning, you know, so, um, the istikhara prayer, yeah. they would pray it every morning just to simply like, okay, Allah, whatever is good for me today, bring it forth. And whatever is not, please take it away. So as I began to do this a few months ago, when things happen throughout the day or there's tension or there's issues, you know, Allah is consistently <laughs> putting yeah. us through emotions. I'm like, oh, 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 this has to be for my benefit. That flat tire had to be for my best interest. Me and my sister's argument had to be for our protection. Maybe it stopped something else. We need to stop seeing things from our worldly eyes, like our physical eye. Allah doesn't show you the hikmah right of way why he does things. Your place is to simply be the and when you see yourself that small, you can give yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're like, you're literally the creator of the world. You know everything. You know who I'm going to be. You know what life. I didn't know I was going to have an accident that changed my life around my personality, my way of thinking. But I'm so thankful to the person it's made me. Allah knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing when he's taking away things. He knows what he's doing when he's taking away people. Even if it's your closest loved ones. The Prophet ﷺ had Khadijah taken away. What did Allah give him? Isra and Mi'raj. The highest of the metaphysical, like, come on. Allah knows what he's doing. He is a God of balance. And if you don't see the, the counterpart, like if you don't see the other part in this realm, something is still happening. Happening. don't worry about what it is you have to believe you have to be convicted that it's there and Allah is the all-seeing and all-knowing and he has my best interest at heart it's like say I hit you up and I said hey I have this um speech at this one place it's VIP only whatever ticket only I got you all you have to do is go there and say your name you're not gonna be freaking out you're like oh my god the main event the main person for the event got me. That's how we have to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as I'm going through this uncertainty, if 2020 taught us anything, <laughs> it's that Allah's power works in seconds. Yep. Yes. Seconds. A virus, a world shut down. No one has ever experienced this. I was going to get a coffee and I ended up in the ICU. Like it doesn't, that's how Allah works. 
You know what I mean? So cultivate your prayers and he will open the rest. Allah is al-fatah. Subhanallah. And ayah, first of all, like, I love all the Quran, but one surah I really gravitate towards is Surah Al-Duha. Um, I, that helped me get through the seat of my life before I knew what I was seeking or who I was seeking. And that was also the surah that came down to the Prophet after a long time of not hearing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the first revolution. So it was this period of like, okay, hello, hi, Allah, what's going on? You told me something and you're right. Now nothing's happened. And I'm hearing from you, but everything else is getting taken away. So what do you want from me? Sometimes the action is in not acting. It's in that invisible handcuff around you of Allah telling you, your doing is by not doing. I need you in stillness. I need you in silence. Because now I need to clean the filth out of you your lens can be more clear because once you see it that way, you have to believe Allah loves you and he's inviting you for a purpose and you're about to like affect every generation coming through you and every generation connected to you. People around you, your elders, your siblings, your friends, the kids, like, and all of the people connected to them. Like you have to believe you give Allah the seed and he will make the forest. He will do everything else. You just have to be positioned. And what do you do in that stillness? Ibadah. Patience is ibadah. Shukr is ibadah. Seeking Allah is ibadah. And when Allah tells you in Surah Al-Duha, um, وَوَجَدَكَ ظَالًا فَهَدَى Dhalan doesn't just mean lost. People think, oh, he, you know, he found you lost and guided you. No, we're all lost. Everybody in this dunya is lost. He guides the ones who are lost and seeking. Dhalan doesn't just mean lost. Yes, you're lost, but you also know that you're seeking something and you don't know what it is. It's almost like this feeling of madness. Like, I'm so sure in this, like, on a heart level, on a soul level, on an unseen level, I'm so sure of this, but it's like, from a dunya perspective, nothing is making sense to me. And when you begin to experience these futuhats, that's what we call them, these openings, these unveilings, you now need to stay in stillness and silence as you watch Allah. Let him teach you, let him show you. There's this um, dua I always make, Ya Allah, fahimni kama fahamta Sulaiman, wa alimni kama alamta Ibrahim. Sulaiman just knew things from Allah. He had fihim. He just had wisdom. It wasn't like I open a book and one, two, three, I learned this. Whereas Ibrahim was taught by Allah. He asked Allah, show me this, teach me this, prove to me, bring yaqeen to my heart. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there are things we can learn from books and lectures and teachers, absolutely. And that's an obligation on every single one of us to learn why are we here? What is this thing we call Islam? Islam is not a religion. It's not this man-made book, this man-made like put together religion. It is a way of life. It is a way of life when I'm with the cash, like at the cash, cash register and she undercharges me 50 cents or a cent or three cents. It's knowing that Allah sees you and he did that to test you. You think it's just three cents. It's not three cents in Allah's eyes. It's honesty and it's dishonesty. You know, there's gray, but there's also black and white. Right. 